Moises Caicedo to Chelsea's taking steps even closer with the Zerbian, the CEO of Wrighton, coming out and basically publicly saying they're looking for replacements. Christopher Nkunku apparently is injured not for weeks, for months. We have got a massive problem, but don't worry, I've got the solution. No one's gonna like it, but I do. I promise you, you will love it or you will hate it. There'll be no in between. Pochettino does not want Vlahovic, but Chelsea is still having talks. And finally, the one and the only midfielder issue that we need to resolve. It's going to be Paredes for Poch, the club one Adams. Tyler Adams, US men's national teams, Tyler Adams. We're gonna break down these four stories. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty. We're going to talk about the little details. We're going to do what we do best at the Gaff Guys View. Entertainment, sitting back, chilling, eating some popcorn and talking about the news. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Gaff Guys View, Brad Doki. I know you enjoyed the intro so far because you made it this far. So the only thing I can ask of every single one of you is just pay the rent. And when I say pay the rent, I don't need no monetary funds. I just need you to hit that like button and make sure we smash over a thousand likes on this video because yesterday's one got 1.4 thousand. I want to see if we can make it a consistent base. Do it now before you forget. And finally, we are creeping up to 30,000. So I really appreciate if you lot start hitting that like button. We got 150 subscribers yesterday. I need you lot to support me so we can get those the remaining 650. So we got the big 30K. That's a massive obstacle for this channel. It will be a massive accomplishment and I'll be truly grateful. And thank you. Do it now. You will forget. I promise. But now time to get into this story. Yesterday we spoke about how the one and only Moises Caicedo's move to Chelsea was edging closer with him getting left out of the squad. People said it's a hamstring injury. Paul Barber, the CEO, came out and was rigorous in a statement saying Moises Caicedo got left out due to the fact that there's a little injury and we don't want to risk him before Luton. No one should read anything into it. Okay, mate, if you say so. Not that Fabrizio and Ben Jacobs have both actively come out and said players not injured. This is a stance from the player basically going on strike. The player is trying to force his way through. Allegedly, Chelsea have told him, look, if you want us to come with a fourth bid, we need to see a tent. We need to see that you do something. We need to know that you want to join Chelsea. And his approach is very simple. Says I'm not playing. And you know what, Moises? It's about time you started to do it. Step one, stop playing. Step two, strike. I don't want to see you attending for training. Step three, if you finally have to get on the pitch to get paid, score an own goal. I promise you, start telling him, you play me, I'm a score and own goal. You would see how quickly they lower the price and get rid of you. Listen, it's not pretty. I would hate it if someone did it to our club, but the fact of the matter is this is business. And if he wants to leave Brighton and Chelsea are bidding 80 to 90 million pounds, and he thinks that's a fair offer for him, considering he joined for 4 million, I think he's allowed to act out. I really do. That's my personal opinion. If he had an agreement with them that 80 million was enough and they're going back on it, act out, my friend. You are allowed to. Finally, Mr. Deserby on YouTube channel Brighton actively comes out and said, we let McAllister go. We let Colwell go. And if we let Caicedo go, we will sign a replacement. We know who we are. We know the level of club we are. We know the policy at this club. However, we will sign the good, important play player. What does that sound like? Resignation. It sounds like you know who you are. You've said it on many occasions, Deserve. Time to let Mr. Moises Caicedo go and bring him so we can have a Latino takeover in our midfield. We can have uh, Santos off the bench, Enzo, and Mr. Caicedo. It's going to be beautiful, it's going to be powerful, it's going to be classy, it's going to be energetic, it's gonna be a little bit of bite, little bit of class, and it's exactly what I wanna see in our midfield. This move is edging closer, it is coming out from too many sources. There is smoke and I can start seeing the fire in the near future, trust me on this one. This next one is worrying. So a source on Twitter, that I have never seen before, but he follows a lot of journalists and a lot of journalists follow him and it's getting me very worried, right? Someone called the Chelsea Scout. My man's got 600 followers, right? He's saying Christopher and Kunku's out for months. Not weeks, months. It could be up to two months. I'm worried. Now I'm worried. And the reason I'm worried now is because we needed Christopher uh, Nkunku to get goals for Chelsea Football Club. No big sources have said it just yet, but with Nkunku's injury history, I am physically and mentally absolutely worried. I do not think this is the right thing to have happened. Now, I told you guys I've got a solution. Some of you aren't gonna like. Buckle up, sit back, I'll tell you. 
Joao Felix. Joao Felix was at Chelsea. In my opinion, Joao Felix did a very good job at Chelsea. Joao Felix showed what he could do in a really negative situation. Joao Felix averaged a goal every two and a half games for Chelsea when you break down his minutes in the Premier League. Under Frank Lampard, where everyone else down tools, where he was getting bench minutes, and under Potter, where he actually looked good for a consistent period of time, and Chelsea played some attacking football, just weren't finishing their dinner because Kai Havertz wasn't finishing, Raheem Sterling wasn't finishing, Joao himself wasn't finishing, but he was creating. He looked competent. Why am I saying Joao Felix? I think Atletico have finally realized they're not getting 120 million. Al Halawa are bidding for him. Player wants a European move. It could be a loan. And what makes it even better is they've lowered their price to 80 million euros. 80 million euros is around about 64 million pounds. Is Joao Felix worth that? For me, he's worth every penny. Can play on the right, can play on the left, he can play in the 10. Put him in the 10, make sure he plays off Jackson, on the left in Kunku, on the right you can have a Mudrick, Noni, Sterling, whoever you want. All of a sudden you've got a beautiful team. A team that can play nice tick attack of football, a team that can press, a team that's high energetic, and a team that can retain the ball, tough areas, and also be a good outlet. I'm sorry, this is the solution. Chelsea need to go and secure this player. Bring Joao home. I'm telling you now, tell them in the Kafka's view. In the comments below, let me know. Do you want Joao Felix to return? I do. I'm telling you right now. I think I watch football for entertainment. Joao Felix entertains me. I think he's a phenomenal footballer. A lot of you say, Alex, you love him too much. You love Joao Felix too much. I don't care. I think he's amazing. The next story. Dusan Vlahovic. It looks like Dusan Vlahovic's move to Chelsea looks like it might be. Chelsea have had a meeting with uh, Juventus coming up and Fabrizio Romano is reporting it. Juventus are staying firm. They want a specific amount of money, which is nearly £40 million, pounds, and they want Romelu Lukaku in return. Chelsea's board are trying to negotiate this price down. However, Maurizio Pochettino, according to J Jacob Steinberg, does not want him. He has been avid in saying, I am not interested in this player. Good player, but not for me. And this is very interesting because initially when this, these rumors came out, everyone was saying, this is driven by Poch. However, it isn't. The more time goes by, the more we're starting to hear. Poch isn't interested in Dusan Vlahovic. And what we're hearing is Dusan Vlahovic isn't interested in Chelsea. So Poch doesn't want him. The board want him, but the player doesn't want to come. Stay away from this move. Romelu Lukaku will either join a Saudi club after the window's closed, or he'll rot on the bench. I don't care personally. He won't be back in our team. I don't want to do business with Juventus purely because I don't want Dusan Vlahovic in the club. I think his statistics at Florentino were very good. I think his statistics at Juve for the first six months were very good. However, I think last year, I saw too much Chelsea-isms. And what I call Chelsea-isms is where we have Diego Costa, Drogba, and maybe Dembaba and Anelka in our time. Other than that, we haven't had a proper number nine. They've got Chelsea's, whether it's Falcao, whether it's Pato, whether it's Higuain, whether it's Morata, whether it's last year with Kai Havertz at false nine, whether you want uh, Timo Werner. Too many players that have got a gene that does not cut it at this big club as a number nine. And sadly, Dusan Vlahovic looks, for me, strikes me like that guy. So I'm avoiding it. I think Poch wants to avoid it. And I want to give Poch what he wants in this situation. Give me your thoughts on it. All right, ladies and jellyfish, the last story is a very interesting one. And it's one that I think we're going to be a little bit torn. Left and right, left and right. Pochettino wants Leandro Paredes. I've explained to you guys this before. Paredes is wanted by Poch for two reasons. Number one, he's managed him before and seen as quality firsthand. And number two, Paredes brings experience. You all know my thoughts on Paredes. I don't rate the player. I think he's very good technically. I don't think he's mobile. And more importantly, I think he's a hothead. I don't like hotheads. You can't understand what you're going to get from a hothead on a daily basis. If I can't know what I'm getting from you on a fixturely basis, then I don't agree with you. Paredes can score a banger from 60 yards, but at the same time slap someone for no reason because he thinks it's funny. So for me, I'm avoiding Paredes. The board I agree with, they don't want Paredes based off the reports that are coming out. However, this is where it gets interesting. The board won Mr. One and Only Ad Tyler Adams. And Tyler Adams for me is somebody that is very interesting. We spoke about him a couple of days ago. We spoke about him in a very good detail, but I'll go through it again. Chelsea won him because he's 23 years old. 
He's a US men's international, very marketable, could be the face of US football, and Chelsea know the power that that brings. Number two, the most important thing, he is 20 million pounds due to his relegation clause from Leeds United. He'll come in, he'll be a backup dancer to Caicedo, to Enzo, and he will be literally coming off the bench and contributing actively. And this is where I need to ask you guys something. The opportunity cost. For those of you that have studied economics, you know what the opportunity cost is. For those of you that haven't, I'm going to quickly give you a little debunk and a quick debrief. Opportunity cost is, if I do something, what would be the opportunity for me to do the alternative and that I'm missing out? So if I ate this apple, I could have eaten this orange instead of this apple. Would it have been better if I ate the orange instead of the apple? And in this case, I'm going to put it this way. Would it not be better to just play Andre Santos? You're buying a 20 million pound 23 year old. And for me, Andre Santos's ceiling is better than Tyler Adams. We've seen it already. He's already got a Brazil cap. We've already acquired him. Clubs are queuing up to take him off our hands. And loaning him, in my opinion, would be stupid. To spending 20 million pounds now to go get a replacement when you already have somebody better than him at home is silly. I know people want Tyler Adams. And I know people think he brings leadership and he brings all of this grit and determination. But guys, how much impact is he gonna have when he hardly plays? And number two, when he's blocking the route because of his transfer value. Personally, this is what I would do if I'm Chelsea. Let me Moises Caicedo, keep Enzo as the starting, like, starting duo. You go, keep Gallagher, don't sell Gallagher this year. As much as I don't like Gallagher, I think we can keep him for one more year. Keep uh, Andre Santos and keep Carney. Carney can cover 10, Carney can cover the six. Carney can play in the eight, and all of a sudden you've got a well-rounded squad. You want to go the extra mile, Keek Ogochokwa, I think that's his name, Leslie Ogochokwa, keep him or loan him out. Do not, under no circumstances, go and get Tyler Adams right now, unless he is the replacement for Conor Gallagher. And even then, I'm still against it, purely based on the fact that I want to see Santos playing more. I think this kid has got it. And when I say it, I mean he could be Enzo Fernandez, 12 months time. He could be Moises Caicedo in 18 months time. When they joined from River Plate and when they joined from uh, the Ecuadorian club, nobody knew them. And now they're worth 100 million pound each. This, the same thing could happen with Andre Santos. Sue me if I'm wrong. Sue me if I'm right. Tell me I'm right. Tell me I'm wrong. My opinion. You lot came for it, I say, with chest what I think should happen. Some people sit on the fence. I'm not doing that on this channel. But guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching till the very end. It means a lot. Peace out, I'm out. Have a lovely evening.